Let's see some examples of using the integral test to be able to estimate the value of a series. We've already seen that this series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, converges. This is what's referred to as a p-series, in this case with p equals 2. And one, in one of the earlier video lectures, you saw that the integral test can tell us that any p-series, that's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the pth power, will in fact converge if p is strictly greater than 1. Now, <clears throat> since this integral converges, and we know that tells us that the series converges, how can we estimate the sum? Remember, this, the sum for this series is just something I'll call s. That's 1 plus a fourth plus a ninth, etc. This whole inf the sum of all the terms that look like 1 over n squared, starting with n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. How can we estimate how big that is? Well, partial sums, as we mentioned in the previous video lecture, are a good way to estimate a series. What about this tenth partial sum? If I take 1 plus a fourth plus a ninth plus a sixteenth plus a twenty-fifth, a thirty-sixth plus a forty-ninth plus a sixty-fourth plus one eighty-first plus one one-hundredth, that's just ten terms. I can add them together, and as you can probably work out on your own with a piece of paper, that's exactly... 1,968,329 divided by 1,270,080. Or if you just use a calculator, you can add them all together and see that you get approximately 1.55. So I claim the value of the series is approximately 1.55. But what do we know? We know it's not exactly 1.55 because I've skipped all the rest of the terms. In fact, we know 1.55 is an underestimate. But how much? We still have an infinite number of terms to go. Well, I have to, if I add the, the rest of those terms together, will that give me a, a, a huge amount extra to add to this, or maybe just a tiny amount? It would be nice to know that if I'm going to claim that this number, 1.55, is a reasonable estimate for the actual sum s. Well, that's where the integral test remainder estimate comes in. We know that the actual error between the full sum s and the partial sum s10 is what we give the name r10 to. And by the error estimate, r10 is actually bounded above. It's, it's something less than the integral from 10 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Remember, we can compute this as being equal to a limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 10 to b of 1 over x squared dx. We just evaluate the integral, which is minus 1 over x from 10 to b. This is a limit as b goes to infinity of minus 1 over b plus 1 tenth. And as b goes to infinity, that first term goes to 0. So the value of the integral is 1 tenth. So what does that tell us? It tells us, because of this estimate, rn is always less than the integral from n to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, that r sub 10 is less than 1 tenth. So that tells me something now very good and very definite. It tells me, even though I don't know the exact value of this series s, I know that it's approximately 1.55. It's actually bigger than 1.55, but the error is less than 1 tenth, so it's less than 1.65. It's somewhere in that range from 1.55 to 1.65. And even though that might not be a fantastic estimate, it tells us something definite. How could you get an estimate that's good to three or four decimal places? Well, this exact same computation would tell us that the error r sub n is less than the integral from n to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. You just do the same thing with an n in place of the 10, and you'll see easily that this is 1 over n. So if you need an error less than 1 1 millionth to get 6 decimal place accuracy, just choose n equals a million, and then r sub a million is, is less than 1 1 millionth. Now, you might think that's a lot to do, but it's easy for a computer to add the first million terms of this series, 
and what you get will definitely give you an accurate representation of s, at least to within one one millionth, a very good estimate. Now, just as a side, this series is a very special one. Uh, for a long time, people didn't even know what the exact value of the series was, but they could estimate it in such, uh, such ways. Uh, the great mathematician Euler, a Swiss mathematician, found some very tricky ways to evaluate the series exactly, and he found that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared is exactly equal to pi squared over 6, a very strange number. Let's see how the integral test applies uh, to estimating other series. Let's look at the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fourth. And again, we know it converges because this integral converges. Again, this is a p series here. In this case, p equals 4, still bigger than 1. So this series converges. In fact, we'll say it converges even better if you can think of it like that. It converges more quickly than the sum of 1 over n squared because these terms, 1 over n to the fourth, tend to 0 much more quickly than 1 over n squared. So how can we estimate the sum? Well, let's say we use the fifth partial sum, s sub 5, which is 1 plus a 16th plus an 81st plus 1 to 56th. That's 4 to the fourth plus 1 over 625. That's 5 to the fourth. We add those together. And a simple computation shows that that's approximately 1.08. What do we know about the actual value of the sum? Well, again, we know that the actual value of this series, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fourth, uh, is equal to s sub n, the nth partial sum, plus r sub n, and this is approximately 1.08. In this case, we're going to use s5. I'll just put in s5 here and then r5. Since the remainder here are positive, remember r5 will just be uh, 1 over 6 to the fourth plus 1 over 7 to the fourth plus 1 over 8 to the 4th, etc., all the terms that we're not using in S5. R5 is positive, so that error, R5, which is S minus S5, is positive. But how big is it? Well, the integral test error estimate tells us R5 is at most the integral from 5 to infinity of 1 over x to the 4th dx. And this integral can be computed very easily. I'll write x to the 4th as x to the minus 4. This is, by definition, the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 5 to b of x to the minus 4 dx. How do we integrate x to the minus 4? Well, that'll be 1 over negative 3 times x to the minus 3. You can check by differentiation. The derivative of that will be x to the minus 4. And we're going to evaluate from 5 to b. Take all, we take the limit of all of that. This is a limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 third, b to the minus third power. Then we have plus 1 third, 5 to the minus 3. 5 to the minus 3 is 1 over 5 cubed, which is 1 over 125. And as b goes to infinity, this first term tends to 0. So this limit is exactly 1 over 3 times 125, which is 375. So what does that tell us about this series? This s is approximately 1.08, and the error is less than 1 over 375. And that's approximately 0 1 over 375 is smaller than, for example, 0 0.003, which would be 1 over 333, et cetera. So we know the error is, approx is somehow of the order of magnitude of a 0 0.003, a 3 in the next decimal place over.